Hello guys, welcome back to MyNut.com, Creativity Through Chess, Chapter 105, Consider All Options. Vladimir Kramnik, born in Russia in 1975, was the world chess champion for seven years after defeating Kasparov in 2000. Kramnik suffers from arthritis, which causes him great physical discomfort while playing, but that never broke his strong spirit. Alexei Shirov was born in Riga, Latvia in 1972 and learned chess from the former chess champion Mikhail Tal. At the age of 22, he became the second best player in the world. In 1993, the two met in Groningen, Holland. One of the games became famous, as we will see. Here is the board after 16 moves. Both players are equal in material, but white pieces are open, while black has a remote queen and the rest of the pieces piled up at the top of the hill, guarding black king, with no open files, ranks or diagonals. Sherov, in white, who is known for his great tactics and end games, decided now to give up material in conquering Kramnik's defense. He moves its queen to f4, a very challenging square, as if he didn't see the obvious tempting move for black, knight to h5, a fork threatening both white queen and rook. Sherov is a super grandmaster, why would he just give up material? It's still hard to grasp his master plan, isn't it? White bishop takes h6. Wow! White let his queen go. What's going on here? Black has no choice but to accept the sacrifice. Knight takes queen on f4. It is only now that white's plan becomes clearer. Bishop takes g7. Check. Black must move its king to h7. And white rook collects the knight on f4, preparing for attacking black's king. Black rook moves to g8, protecting from white bishop. White can't mate black just yet, as black bishop is guarding h4, so white moves his rook to f4, doubling rook to create more pressure on g file and threatening mate in 1 with rook to h3. So, white is only one step ahead of mating black. What should black do? Remember this step, we will get back to this point later. Anyway, Kramnik can't see any way out and decides to go for a perpetual check draw by exchanging bishop for a rook. Black rook takes g7, white rook takes g7, check. Note that black king can't force perpetual check by going to h8, as it would be mate in 2. Can you see it? If not, try it yourself. Ok, black king to h6, white rook to g8, white king is back to h7 to avoid mate, and the game is drawn. What made this game famous is the post-game analysis, which shows that Kramnik actually missed a nice creative move, which could have won the game. Let's go back to where white is only one move from mating black. What could black do at this position? You may want to pause the video to think. Have you found the move? If you did, you saw what a world champion missed. That's right, queen takes knight on c3. Let's analyze the board now. White can't mate with rook to h3 as black queen is guarding the third rank. White can, however, accept the sacrifice and take black's queen, but he must be careful. If he takes queen with b-pawn, it's a forcing move sequence with mate in 2. Black bishop to a3, check. White must move king to b1 and then black rook to d1, checkmate. So, white must take black queen with its rook, but now black rook can safely take b7. If white attempts to check black on h3, black has no problem now as he has g8 as a shelter. If you count the pieces now, black is still one piece up with two strong bishops and has a great chance to win later on. Our lesson for creative thinking is that when contemplating all possible moves, try not to discard any possibility even one that may look silly at first sight. That's all for now. 
The full game, as always, can be found below the YouTube video. I hope you enjoyed this episode by MyNut.com. If you did, please give us a like and go check our Amazon store for our unique chess sets. Discount coupons available on our site. The links are just below the video.